Hello everyone, this is Roger from Wave Computation Technologies. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the um, advanced mesh control features to capture all the details of geometries when generating the FDTD mesh. So basically, when you, when you run a, a simulation, the most important thing is to um, use the discretized elements, either FDTD grids or finite elements, to capture every detail in the in your structure. If the cell cannot uh, represent the geometry accurately, you basically are uh, will get a very poor solution or sometimes even wrong because the geometry is not being accurately captured. So this is a very important factor during the simulation. I can show you a, a very simple example for uh, such a, such as this case which has a substrate board with the thickness and two metal uh, like microstrip lines over here mounted as a ring connected with a circuit. So this geometry need to be modeled and uh, the meshed grid need to be generated to capture these details. So first of all if you uh, take a look at the, this uh, the top uh, the side view you will see I have one two, three, four, five arms, okay? And I draw these five arms separately. As I show you over here, this list all the solids. So you can see this is body one, one arm, two arm, the third one. There are five of them in total. So the software can automatically capture all the details of if you draw uh, geometry in this way. So if I show you the mesh, as you can see, click this button, the grid will be generated. And, and as you can observe, all the details of the geometry will be captured by the FDTD cells. Okay. Now, because these are separated uh, uh, geometries, so each geometry is treated independently when generating the mesh. Now, if I do a union operation, for example, I combine these four arms together by clicking this union. Now you will see these uh, geometries combine as one geometry, not five anymore. So what you can observe is that this is still the, the mesh grid generated. But as you can see, all the details is lost when, when the software is generating the mesh. Now the reason here is because this geometry is treated as the as a as a single geometry, and only the bounding vertices, bounding box, is being gener uh, is assigned a critical point when generating the mesh. So in order to capture you know uh, all the details again, we need to use a an advanced feature uh, when generating the mesh, which is called mesh control. So what you need to do is to double click the item of your geometry. And in, in this dialog, you can show you can choose materials and all the operations. You can see you union all of them together, right? And the name, transparency, and things like that. And here, there's a button. It's called Mesh. You click that, there's an additional window comes out. OK? So you, you have the option, like, use additional control points when generating the mesh. Now, as you can see, only the bounding box, body bounding box, is used. That is why, as you can observe here, only the uh, outside, exterior region is captured by the FDTT cell. In order to capture the inside feature, you need to turn on additional options, like level 2 is the surface bounding box. That means every surface on, of this object, uh, the points, will be treated as the critical points as well when generating the mesh. You can turn on even additional features like bounding, edge bounding box and bo even body vertices. So that means it will capture all the details of the geometry uh, when meshing the, when trying to generate the grid. So for example, if I turn on all of this and I click OK, click OK here again, and as you can see, the mesh is returned to the previous one when, uh, when um, all the five arms are uh, disassembled, okay?
So this is one example to demonstrate this concept. The other example, like in this in this example, is a simple um, transmission uh, via, and then come back to the bottom again with some ground. Okay. So now I double click this, and I turn off all the um, mesh advanced mesh control points. Okay, this one is already done. So let's take a look how is the mesh going to be look like. You turn on the mesh view. As you can see, on the um, along the Z direction, the mesh is being captured uh, uh, accurately. As you can see, even the thin features, and here with the thin features as well, gradually changed the cell. However, if you change it to the top view, as you can see, all the FDTD cells only taking care of the exterior region of the entire geometry. And this is the exterior region as well, since it's a separate object. All the details inside is kind of missed. So in order to capture those details, we need to turn on the advanced feature again by double clicking this and turn on all of this. And as you can see, it's already on with all the features captured. And the same to the ground geometry as well. You turn on all of this, click OK. You will see the mesh has changed as well. Especially, uh, let's go back to top view. Along this uh, region, as you can see, it's getting thinner, thinner and smaller cells. And especially on this region, you can see the cells much smaller. This is because uh, they are used to capture the the details over um, over here and here the corner okay so all those points are being treated as critical points so it is very important for you to understand that in order to let a simulation run accurately and even correctly you need to make sure the FDTD cell and the mesh is completely representing every detail of the geometry okay of course, this will in increase the uh, computation cost of your simulation. However, to get the correct solution, sometimes there's no option, but have to um, uh, balance between the cost and accuracy. Okay, so that that's all for this uh, advanced control mesh control features. All right, thanks.